Hi my lovely Frosty fam, it's me Karen Frost here at Nail Decadence and I've got another video for you. I'm using the Sugar Bell, Sugar Bell? Sugar Pebble collection from SBD London again and as you saw those two are the ones that I'm going to be using number four and five in this set. Um, I totally forgot to film like I normally do the, all of the products I used so this is you'll see this in other videos because I did three of these with the sugar pickle collection but um yeah so I just sort of used a bit of footage from the other one because I just totally forgot to film the products I was using but anyway I'm only using the Nao clear acrylic with a bit of glitter and pink mica mixed in you know what I'm like, I mix my own colours, so if you're interested and you'd want to know how to mix your own acrylic colours, do head along to the link in the cards to my video on how I mix my custom acrylic colours, but yeah, it's I'm using the high speed, mono, high speed monomer as usual, my size 12 Kalinsky SBD oval brush, and yeah obviously my hand dolly if you are after a realistic silicone practice can head over to www.handdolly.co.uk and you are most welcome to use my code kfgift for a discount it is an affiliate code so i do make a small commission however i did purchase two of these hands with my own money before i became affiliated with hand dolly so just so you know it's product i stand by i love it i use it all the time as you can see in my videos anyway on with what is going on so i have applied my thin clear base as usual and now i'm applying these the pink acrylic as you can see because i will be um gel polishing over the top but i wanted you to be able to see how i was applying the acrylic so i didn't want to just build it in clear so i just mixed a bit of pink mica into some clear and yeah this is how it turns out just so that it shows up better on camera so you guys can see more so as you can see i am building the nail so structure shape strength everything has to be done so that first bead I've applied by the cuticle area tap that in around the cuticle area get that nice and neat first of all and then I'll bring the rest of the bead down as far as it will go blend that down the nail keep an eye on my side walls and if they're bulging out swipe with the brush to just make sure I'm not losing my shape because if you swipe the sides then obviously you've got less filing to do so sculpt with your brush not with your file kind of thing um, although you can fix a lot of things with filing however you don't want to have to rely on that so try and keep your application as neat as possible so that second bead goes to the middle of the nail again making sure that it's nicely neatly applied bringing the bead down as far as it will go patting and pressing if you use the body of your brush you will be able to you nearer the ferrule you've got more pressure you can apply to your acrylic now where i use the high speed monomer it sets up very very fast so that's why i need to press harder than you would on a say slower speed speed monomer because it sets up so fast it's much firmer in because it polymerizes so much faster so yeah i prefer to work like that i find it difficult to work with slower systems because i'm impatient <laughs> i like it to start going firm so that i can pat and press it that's the way i prefer to apply acrylic but a lot of people you know they're quite happy to stroke and brush more than push and press so yeah it's personal preference so then I added that other bead up by the cuticle area. That was to ensure that that area was um, high enough and also bring, bringing the, some of that bead towards the apex area to make sure obviously that the structure of the nails there. So again on the ring finger, 
first bead I've put by the cuticle area. You can work from the tip first if you like, it's all personal preference. Um, the way I was taught was to work from the tip and work back towards the cuticle, but you know, it's all personal preference. You can work from the middle and then do you know either side so it's up to you how you want to work it I prefer sometimes to do well most of the time I do it by the cuticle first and if I'm just using one color as you like or clear just building the nail with the acrylic yeah a lot of the time I do go to the cuticle area first and then I added another bead this bead was a uh, quite big <laughs> it was a large bead uh, so I brought it all the way down to the free edge, it managed to get all the way down and then I had a bit of excess so I just used my brush, brush to cut that off and then I'm making sure I'm still focusing on patting and swiping down my sides to keep it nice and neat. There wasn't quite enough at that free edge, it had thinned out a bit, I think I brought off too much of the acrylic so I added a little bit more, turned to the side, made sure that my apex is there and uh, it didn't need any more acrylic so I didn't add any more it was high enough same with the little finger cuticle bead first tap that in get that nice and neat bring the rest of the bead down the nail as far as it will go again paying attention to those side walls making sure it's not bulging out too much just tidying up with the tip of my brush there very tip of my brush to stroke around and then the body of the side of the brush to pull in the sides, added another bead by the free edge, make sure that is the correct thickness, we're looking for credit card thickness or slightly thinner than that, the free edge doesn't need to be really thick, it's not necessary, as long as you've got a strong apex you don't need a really thick free edge, it's, yeah not necessary and I prefer not to have a thick free edge, you know, some people like thicker nails and that's up to them, you know, each to their own but personally I like it a bit thinner so I look at that nail from all different angles and it was a little bit low so I added another bead of acrylic where it was low and then I'll blend that into the previous acrylic of course so it is seamless and really stroke with my brush to get it nice and level and neat so that I have less filing to do because obviously the less filing the better Again, looking from the side, and I noticed that the um, apex area and the cuticle area was a little bit low. So again, just a small bead by that area where it is needed. Tap that in, get that nice and neat, and bring the rest of the bead down. Well, the front of the bead down kind of thing. So I want it to stay mostly where I placed it. So I filed and shaped off camera. There wasn't a lot of filing to do, as you can see. They have not changed much. And now it's time for the gel polish. So, first layer of this colour, it's a beautiful sort of, it's a blue but it's got like a purple hue to it kind of thing. It's a really pretty colour. And this uh, pebble, sugar pebble collection, it's got the little black bits in it and it also has this gorgeous shimmer running through it. It's so pretty. The camera doesn't do it justice, you have to see these in real life. They are really pretty, but they are on the thick side because of the bits that they have in them. It's very easy to lose your shape. And if you've watched my previous video, you'll have seen that I did actually, after applying the gel polish, I actually filed the sides a little bit because I'd lost my shape. Um, that's something that you can do when you lose your shape. I should have done it before I had applied the gel paints and done the design really. But yeah, that is always an option. If you find that the gel polish has really bulked out your shape and you've lost your shape, you can use your hand file to just bring the shape back a little bit and then top coat. So just bear that in mind and you'll see when I'm ready, just before I'm ready to cure this, I will actually pass over my brush without much um, gel polish on it. I will pass over the very tips of the nails to make sure none of the product has pulled at the free edge, which also helps with keeping your shape kind of thing. So yeah, and I don't cap on the first layer of gel polish. I never cap on the first layer. That's because I'm trying to keep 
the bulk of the free edge kind of thing so it's up to you how you do it but this is this is just how I do it I try and see there we go so I'm just using the very tip of my brush from the bottle to just rub over the end of, of each nail to remove any excess uh, gel polish from there and then hopefully they won't be bulked out then I will apply the second layer unless you've noticed I will apply the f when I first apply the brush to the nails I will go in the middle of the nail first to deposit some of the gel polish before I go then go towards the cuticle area that way I'm not putting a brush full of gel polish by the cuticle area and risking flooding it if you just deposit it in the middle of the nail then you've removed a lot of the excess of the gel polish and therefore you're, you're less likely to flood your cuticle area and side walls just a little tip with gel polish that's um, how I get around it I'm so sorry about the camera blur I haven't changed any of the settings in my camera I have no idea why it's not focusing in this video it didn't do it in the previous video and it didn't do it in the video afterwards I don't know why it's doing it I'm so sorry all I can do is apologize I did contemplate not um, uploading this video but in the end I decided you know you can still see what I'm doing so I'll upload it um, but all I can do is apologize I'm sorry if it does your night in that it keeps going out of focus anyway so I've you know, applied the second layer and as you can see opaque on that second coat and I'm just using a cleanup brush with some rubbing alcohol to tidy up any areas where I have managed to get it on the skin because you don't want to cure it on the skin do get it off before you place the nails in the lamp very important it will cause um, obviously the product to cure on the skin which you don't want full stop but also it has the potential to cause lifting so yeah and again just swiping over the free edge of the nails be just before I put them in the lamp that way if any of the product has pulled at the free edge I'm therefore pulling it off with my brush so hopefully I don't lose my shape too much and now I'm going to apply the SBD London foil gel it is a good good foil gel as you will see I will do a full nail of the foil gel on this finger and on this other finger the middle finger I'm going to top coat first which is what I forgot to do in the previous video if you've watched the previous video you'll know what I mean I did the put the foil gel on and totally forgot that I should have top coated first because if I if you don't top coat first then the foil will also stick to the rest of the nail that doesn't even though it doesn't have foil gel on it because SBD London does have a tacky layer to it and the foils will stick to it so <laughs> do top coat if you're not doing the full nail definitely top coat before and then apply the foil gel if that makes sense so as soon as that nail comes out of the lamp I will apply the foil I'm just using a little cuticle pusher to rub that foil all over that nail because like I said I'm doing a full full nail of the foil on this one so make sure you rub it in real well and if you, you don't rub it in as you can see uh, it won't transfer uh, these because this polish has all those little bits in it it's not a particularly even surface so you do have to pay a little bit more attention to really rubbing that foil on properly to make sure it's all transferred because like I said it's not an even surface with all the bits and bobs that it has within the polish itself but as you saw as long as you you rub it in properly it transfers fine then on the middle finger I'm using the foil gel to create this oval shape and I'm just it's hard to see because obviously the foil gel is clear but I am doing just an oval in the center of the nail very I'm trying to keep it as neat as possible and then once I have finished doing that I will cure it in the lamp for 60 seconds because that's how long it takes to cure the foil gel nicely and ready for the foil now that it is out of the lamp I can apply the foil so I've chosen this flower 
and I'm just gonna use the same cuticle pressure rub 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 get that to transfer onto that foil gel there we go transferred nicely perfectly in fact there's no missing bits now I'm going to use the rubber base to encase that flower so I'm doing a cabochon which is basically just a raised oval um, yeah sorry about the camera blur again Ugh, it's so annoying so what I'm doing because the foil gel oh, not foil gel because the rubber base is really thick I'm using that to do my raised dome which is it gives it a really cool effect so just raising it a little bit higher I wanted it to be quite prominent it depends on how you you know personal preference but I wanted it to be quite prominent so I'm adding a little bit more of the rubber base there I'm just flash curing it in place so that it doesn't move because it will get to cure once I'm um, doing the other bits and pops and when I find do the final top coat it will get a full 60 second cure of that at that point so yeah just flash curing at this point and now I'm going to use the SBD London gel gel paint which is really good quality it applies so nicely really nicely so on the index finger I'm just doing a line vertically from cuticle to free edge same on the ring finger a vertical line straight down the middle of the nail from cuticle to free edge as straight as I can get it with my shaky hands that is I didn't do too badly and it's such a beautiful shimmery gold. I think it goes against that blue really nicely. And then on the middle finger, I'm doing two horizontal lines along the free edge. Just like so. I took a risk, I was feeling brave, I took a risk and didn't flash cure the other vertical lines before I did the um, work on the middle finger. Fortunately I didn't, I didn't cause any smudges but yeah I took a bit of a risk there. <laughs> I was feeling really brave. Normally I'd flash cure in between because I'm really bad, I'm so klutzy but yeah I managed not to cause any problems and now I'm just doing some sort of vines or stalks for the flowers on this uh, little finger just to tie in just give it a bit of an accent of the gold because the other nails have got the gold on I just wanted to tie the little finger in with it all and then around the cabochon which is the oval dome to make it stand out more and really look like a cabochon you got you give it the outline and yeah it just sets it off really nicely and makes it look like it's in a setting you know oh I just think it, it works you may not like it might not be your cup of tea but I really liked it the, it's a really cool effect and it's something that is simple and easy to do in the salon that your clients will be like oh that's so cool because it kind of magnifies the um, flower in you know underneath because it kind of magnifies it the effect of having the dome over it so cool so then well let's bling it baby so i flash cured the gel paint in place because obviously I need to flash cure at this point so i flash cured it and now i'm using the sbd london diamond gel to put some crystals on i'm just dotting them around that little finger and just here and there just a few random ones and on the ring finger and the index finger I'm just doing three at the very cuticle area just right in the middle there just give them a little bit more sparkle why not happy with that so I'll flash cure that in place and now it's time to top it off and keep it tough so whilst I'm top coating as we are at the end of the video I have left some footage of the nails the finished nails at the end of the video with some photos for you I'd like to take this opportunity and say thank you ever so much for coming to my channel and watching this video I appreciate you 
thank you for spending some of your most precious time with me if you have enjoyed this video in any way shape or form please go ahead and click that like button if you've not subscribed already you're most welcome to join the frosty fam they are awesome click that subscribe button be part of us join us <laughs> we're not a cult <laughs> Anyway, if you are feeling up to it, you're most welcome to leave me a comment. I am more than happy to talk to you. That's all I've got for this time, peeps. You take care now, and I'll speak to you all again very soon. Bye for now.